Debug, continuing debate. Uh, the Honorable Member for Calgary Mindenborg. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. I truly always appreciate the opportunity to come here to this House of Commons and speak on behalf of the people of Calgary Mindenborg. And Mr. Speaker, of course, I'm very proud to say that I am a proud mom, a proud hockey mom in the riding of Calgary Mindenborg. Mm -hmm. And I certainly like to have conversations with the other mothers at the, at the hockey rink, you do that. You're waiting for your kid to get on the ice or you know, you're waiting for the practice to end and you have conversations. And certainly we have conversations about childcare. There's, there's no doubt about it. A, a lot of families require childcare. Uh, a lot of families are not so fortunate to have a parent stay at home. Two incomes are required. But we also have conversations about why that is so. And we have conversations about the cost of living. And my truth, Mr. Speaker, and the truth of the hockey moms that I talk to is that making life affordable for Canadian families by this government is a lie. And daycare is just a part of that lie, Mr. Speaker. And it's a cycle, Mr. Speaker, it is a cycle that this government has created. First of all, there is inflationary spending. We've seen that excessively. We've seen excessive taxation. So there's inflationary spending, excessive taxation. This drives up the cost of living for Canadian families, families as well as uh, Canadian businesses. I've mentioned often in this house, I come from a small business family, so taxes on small business are very important to me and to my family. And as a result of this drive up of the cost of living, it drives Canadian families into poverty, where businesses have to close, laying off workers, Canadian families can't afford to eat, they can't afford rent, and they certainly can't afford childcare. Now, but what this government does, Mr. Speaker, after they've created this nation of poverty is they throw little scraps out, little scraps out to the public and to Canadians. And this daycare program is just a marketing plan. It is just one of those scraps. They, you know, they threw out the rent subsidy. Here's, here's $500 this month. I don't know what you're going to do next month, but here's $500. The grocery rebate, here's $234, even though groceries are going to cost an additional $1,000 for a family of four, Mr. Speaker. So what this government does is they make life unaffordable for Canadians, and daycare is just another example of, of what they are doing. They are creating a cycle of continuous poverty for Canadians, where Canadians are reliant upon them instead upon ourselves, the common sense of the common people as we talk about. And this daycare scheme is just another ex example of that. Mr. Speaker, I talked about inflationary spending. We saw in this budget an additional $69.7 billion that's going to be spent in budget 2023. This will cost, Mr. Speaker, each Canadian household an additional $4,200. I just came from Operations Committee, Mr. Speaker, where we had the President of the Treasury Board who just added another $1.3 billion dollars to the tab of Canadians for the recently negotiated agreements, which they failed to do two years previously. So in a hurry to get things done, they have now finally completed these, these uh, agreements, um, thank goodness, because services were suffering for Canadians, but it's for the price tag of $1.3 billion. This government has to bring down inflationary spending, excessive taxation, so Canadians can have a chance. We see an escalator tax, Mr. Speaker, on beer, wine, and spirits of 2%. And let me tell you, the hockey moms and I, sometimes, you know, we could use a nice glass of wine at, at the end of the day, but it's 2% more now as a result of this government and their creation of a life which is not affordable for Canadians. 
We see the cost of food increasing, a 40% high inflationary spending, with 1.5 million Canadians visiting food banks in a single month, Mr. Speaker. We've talked about these numbers a lot in this House. One in five Canadians skipping meals. And as I mentioned, on the grocery rebate, just $234 when groceries are going to cost an additional $1,065 more. Daycare is a part uh, of, this, of this lie of affordability that they say that they're creating for Canadians when really they're just making everything more expensive. The cost of shelter, Mr. Speaker, has doubled. Mortgages have doubled in 2015 from $1,400 to $3,100 here in 2023. Rents have doubled from $973 to $1,760. That's for a single bedroom. Life is more affor uh, not affordable. And again, it's a result of this Liberal government and what they're doing, taking all this money and handing out little bits back, little scraps, like this fake daycare plan. Rent in Kelowna. The housing minister couldn't say what the rent in Kelowna was when uh, the member for Kelowna Lake Country asked last week. That, that's just an example of how out of touch this government is. This government is raising payroll taxes on workers and small business, Mr. Speaker. A worker who is making above $66,000 will now need to pay an extra $255 to CPP and an extra $50 to EI. And of course, Mr. Speaker, we have the carbon tax. The carbon tax went up 14 cents a litre on April 1st. We know that the carbon tax is driving up the cost of gas, of groceries, as I have indicated. You know, those groceries have to get to the supermarket somehow, and they go through vehicles which, which use gas, so there's a double taxation there. And then home heating something which all Canadians need, yet this government has called Canadians polluters uh, in the past, grannies in the Maritimes polluters, when, when really, it again, it is their cycle of poverty that they are creating to make them dependent upon them, uh, which is creating this. And an average family will spend between $402 and $847 a year more on the carbon tax. So I've talked about all of these other things that where the government needs to reduce inflationary spending, they need to uh, reduce um, the, the spending because of this cycle that they are creating, which drives up living for Canadians, drives them down into poverty, and then they're forced to accept these scraps like this $10, uh, uh, $10 daycare. And this $10 daycare is also an illusion, Mr. Speaker, because if you can't access it, it doesn't exist. It, it doesn't help thousands of families and children on the wait list or the operators who don't have the staff or the infrastructure. And a, a, it is said that in the future, there will only be one space for every three children who need it, and that by 2026, a shortage of 8,500 child care workers will exist in this country. You know, in, in fact, perhaps the government could use a pink seal program, something very similar to the blue seal program, which our leader has put forward for the trades. In BC, 27% of child care centers turn away children due to a lack of staff. In Ontario, by 2026, 38% of kids will not have a space. And the thing about this, Mr. Speaker, is that this government has the audacity to think that they can do things better than the common people, than Canadians. Where have we seen the failure of this? Oh, from passports, from the very minister who's responsible for this program, with the immigration backlog, with the inability to negotiate a public service deal over two years. And what does this say about mothers? So many moms would rather just stay home with their children, but they can't. They can't because this government has made this country a two paycheck family. Two paychecks are needed, Mr. Speaker, to keep the family functioning, to keep them in, uh, with a roof over their head, to keep them fed, Mr. Speaker. And what does it say about the women who operate these daycares, yeah. closing them down, taking away income from families and often new Canadian families? In conclusion, Mr. Speaker, making life affordable for Canadians by this government is a lie. 
Inflationary spending and taxation drives up living for Canadians and for businesses. It drives Canadians into poverty. They can't eat, they can't afford rent, businesses close, and I won't even get into the natural resources sector, and this government throws scraps at Canadians. And this daycare is one of the scraps. Making life affordable for Canadians is a lie, and this daycare program is one of them. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Uh, the Honourable Minister of Families, uh, Children and Social Development. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Well, I hope Canadian women heard that speech because the Honourable Member basically said that, you know, $6,000 a year in their pockets is scraps. Uh, she said that women want to stay home with their children. If they want to, that's their choice. But actually, there's a lot of women who also want to have a career. I'm sorry she has such an archaic vision of uh, women in this country. That's I find right. that incredibly disappointing. Mm -hmm. uh, the Conservatives have gone from calling childcare a slush fund to now calling it a marketing tool. I don't know if she's spoken to the families who are benefiting from this, who are saving thousands of dollars a year, who have called this life-changing. And in Alberta, the Alberta government has now created 5,500 new spaces since we signed the agreement. Mr. Speaker, everything that that member opposite said is simply false. But what I want to know, what I really want to know, and what I think Canadian families want to know is, is she going to support Bill C-35, will the Conservatives support Bill C-35 and work with us to deliver affordable, high-quality, accessible, inclusive child care for Canadians? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Well, member for calgary Mindapore. Well, what this minister failed to mention is that in my meeting with Albertan operators, actually 67 per cent of them cannot use this program. 67 it's absolutely true. And this is what they do, Mr. Speaker. They perpetuate this false narrative. I will. They per per perpetuate this false, false narrative. I said they tax us to death. They increase inflationary spending. They drive families into the ground. They can't get homes. They can't eat. They can't get daycare. If, if they, and you know what? People, like I said, people have to work because they need two incomes. That's why a lot of families have to work. If women want to work, fantastic. I'm the poster child for that. I, I've had an incredible career before I got here. I'm happy to be here and be a mom and do both, sure. but families can't do that. Sure. The, what this minister is doing is perpetuating that lie, Mr. Speaker. Questions and comments? Question and comment the Honourable Member for Nunavut. I'd like to thank the member for her animated uh, intervention. Um, I, I'm a bit confused, I think, about what going, what's going on with the debate, because we all know how important childcare is and how much poverty there, are, there is in our communities. Uh, yet, at this point, we're debating uh, a minor procedural matter. Uh, I wonder if the member can explain why we're debating this minor procedural matter when we could be debating other more important ways to address poverty and ensuring that children are getting the care that they need. The Honourable Member for Calgary, Mindapore. That's the whole point, is that we should be debating ways to find efficiencies within the government, to uh, lower taxes, to lower spending. And instead, we are wasting our time here in this House creating programs to make this government look good and to pretend to Canadians like they're doing something, Mr. Speaker. So I absolutely agree with that member that we should be doing things which actually benefit Canadians, which is stop uh, in decreasing inflationary spending, decreasing taxation so that Canadians can buy whatever they want in the grocery store, so that Canadians can actually go and purchase a home, so that Canadians can m make the choice for a parent to stay at home if they want, instead of having to, uh, having to, uh, like, it, they're, they're perpetuating their lie, Mr. Speaker. That's what they're doing. And Canadians are catching on to it, Mr. Speaker. Canadians are catching on to it. Questions and comments, uh, the Honourable Member for Peterborough Kawartha. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you to my colleague for her intervention and her passion on this. And as a mom, I know she knows this. I think what is interesting is um, we've heard so much tonight in the chamber, and, and the reality is, and we've had the testimony, 
that this, this bill actually is hurting the most vulnerable, the most marginalized, and the poor, which um, a member from Nunavut had mentioned. But one of the things that came out of the Child Care Desert's report in the CCPA, the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives, is most often rural areas that are more likely to have child care deserts in comparison to urban areas with a population of over 100,000 people. And it really speaks to the point of, is this purely a political tool? Because guess where all of the seats um, that the Liberals win are? Um, and they continue to just disregard rural areas of Canadians and, and not treat them fairly. I'd like to know what the member thinks of that. The Honourable Member of Calgary, Mindapur. Much to my colleague for that speaker, uh, to, um, excuse me, question, Mr. Speaker. And you know what really comes to my mind is just the tagline we saw from the Liberal government in the first few years that they were in power, and this is uh, the middle class and those hoping to join it. And frankly, I've seen. Um, lots of people from my riding go from the upper middle class to the middle class. So congratulations, they're, and even the lower middle class. So they're doing a great job at having people join the middle class, Mr. Speaker. That's what I would say about that. Again, it's this cycle that I'm talking about. They spend too much. They uh, tax too much. They create poverty for Canadians. People get unemployed, can't buy houses, can't buy food. They're driven into poverty. They come along as the saviors with these scraps to save them. Yay, them. Good job. Thank you very much. Continuing.